Hi, if you're interested in finding the world's strange and not so strange events, then feel free to stick around because I post videos just like this one, which is about a particularly destructive event that took place in the Indian Ocean in late 2004. Let's get into it. The depths of the Indian Ocean have spawned a natural disaster enormous in scale. The devastation is so widespread, it's tsunami almost impossible to fully engage tonight. Spreads from Indonesia to Sri Lanka. Here are the latest Those details. The island of Sumatra in northwestern Indonesia, where more than 4,000 people are thought to have died. In Sri Lanka, officials say more than 3,000 people have been killed and more than a million affected. In India, 3,000 people almost officially arrested. At least 200 have been killed in southern Thailand, including some tourists. Hundreds of people are missing. And waves have swamped the low-lying Maldive Islands, leaving the capital Mali two-thirds underwater. Die brechen da hinten und die Wellen, die brechen da hinten auch heftig, oder? Alter Schwede. Guck mal da hinten, Schnicki, wie das hochpäscht, das Wasser. It was the morning after Christmas, December 26, 2004. The residents of the Assei province on the island of Sumatra, Indonesia, were going about their business, with many of them celebrating the holidays. Alongside the local Indonesian population, there was actually a large number of tourists vacationing for the holidays in the beautiful regions surrounding the Indian Ocean, including the Assei province on the island of Sumatra. It was about 8 o'clock in the morning when people would have felt the ground beneath them sort of start to shake with frightening intensity. The massive quake lasted about 10 minutes, and afterward the people of Sumatra, they knew what just happened. That was an earthquake. A big one. Now, only a few minutes after this earthquake, people on the coastline would have noticed the water along the shores begin to recede, exposing the seabed by as much as 1,600 feet further off the coast. Almost as soon as the water began to recede, a small wave of water roughly three feet high began to rush back toward the beach, but that wasn't all. People who were paying attention to the horizon would have noticed a massive hurling wall of water almost 100 feet tall barreling toward the coast at incredible speeds. This was a tsunami. The people of Assei barely had any warning or time to react at all since many didn't even know what a tsunami was. When they saw this wall of water rushing toward them, people were clambering over each other trying to get away, and when the massive wave actually smashed into the coast, sweeping away everyone caught in its path, some climbed up into trees, hid inside buildings, or just held on the posts, pretty much anything they could find. But the raging current of the tsunami kept rising higher and higher until eventually there wasn't really anywhere to hide, literally sweeping away entire towns. On just the island of Sumatra alone, and especially the city of Banda Assei, which is the biggest city in the Assei province, nearly 200,000 people were killed by the tsunami, with the Assei province suffering the most fatalities. The following video is from the city of Banda Assei, just as the tsunami begins to slam into the beach. Now, this tsunami didn't just hit Indonesia, it slammed into several countries surrounding the Indian Ocean, with the hardest hit being Thailand, Sri Lanka, India, and of course, Indonesia. 
started to really pick up. It just came out of nowhere. It went really dark and we were getting pushed against the rocks. The corals and rocks started to suddenly flow around. Even fishes started to bump into them. Several hundred miles north of the island of Sumatra is the country of Thailand. And just off the coast of Thailand was a chain of islands called the Similan Islands. The water surrounding these islands was very clear blue with stunning coral reefs. It's absolutely beautiful. So in 2004, it was a very popular diving destination. However, the areas around these islands were actually known for having relatively strong currents. On the morning of December 26, 2004, there were many divers in the water. They were just doing what you would typically see recreational divers doing in a place like this, observing fish, examining coral, and just generally having a good time. Until suddenly, those who were in the water felt a series of tumbling currents that were described as feeling as if they were in a washing machine. The currents they were feeling were a result of the tsunami generated by the massive earthquake mentioned earlier. Fortunately, nobody was killed in this incident, but the boats on the surface of the water would have noticed a relatively small series of rolling waves pass somewhat gently below them and continue moving on to the northeast. The following events that occurred in Thailand were not so gentle. The beaches of Thailand were vastly popular. The fantastic views and the gentle blue waters made this a very popular destination for tourists. And these tourists would stay in a series of large resorts stationed along the coast of Thailand. By far the most popular of these resorts were within the regions of Futek along with the up and coming tourist region of Khao Lak, where there were thousands of tourists from around the world making the beaches there their temporary homes for the holidays alongside the locals living there. On the morning of December 26th, at a resort in Kaolak, many people decided to sleep in, while some decided to go out onto the white, sandy beaches as a way to enjoy their morning. Many tourists and locals were relaxing on the beach when a number of people began to point out toward the ocean something weird was happening. The water was very slowly beginning to recede, revealing much of the seabed. This was absolutely astonishing to many of the tourists and even many of the locals because they had never really seen the ocean do this before. However, some of the locals and tourists, as soon as they noticed this happening, they just decided to leave. Many tourists and locals who were exploring this weird phenomenon didn't really realize the danger of what was happening. So many of the locals and some of the tourists tried their best to warn the others on the beach that, hey, what you're doing is probably a bad idea. You should probably go seek shelter or at least get off the beach. A large number of people did decide to listen to the people trying to convince them to leave and retreat inland, but a number of people thought, you know what, I'm sure it's not that bad. If things look like they're getting out of hand, I'll just leave then. So they remained stubborn and continued to explore the beach. Now, I want to explain why some of these people didn't take these warnings very seriously. It's important to put yourselves into their shoes. 2004 was a very different time than it is today. Uh, information wasn't nearly as widespread via the internet as it is today, and tsunamis like this were a relatively rare occurrence. In fact, the communities surrounding the Indian Ocean hadn't seen a major tsunami before in their entire lives since the last major tsunami occurred after the Krakatoa eruption in 1883. Also in 2004, early warning systems for tsunamis weren't really in place in the Indian Ocean due to the relative rarity of tsunamis and the complexity of these systems involved. So with that, let's continue. Before long, many of the people who were on higher ground uh, were observing the ocean, 
and they noticed a very long line stretching across the horizon, quickly making its way closer and closer to shore. Eventually, the people who were still down exploring the beach noticed this, and the vast majority, at that point, decided to get out of there. Unfortunately, out of dangerous curiosity, a few decided to stay on the beach and wait for what was coming. And it wasn't good. Just minutes later, the thin line that was on the horizon was now just off the beach, and all onlookers saw was a wall of water roughly 30 feet high roaring toward the coast of Kaulak and those who remained on the beach. So at this point, it was crystal clear that being on the beach was a horrible idea, and most people ran for their lives. Except for one. The following video is of the tsunami slamming into the beaches of Kaulak, and of a lone man who remained on the beach, but by the time he realized the danger of his situation, he had already accepted his fate. Here is that video. Was is that? Oh, tsunami. Yeah? The tsunami roared inland, absolutely demolishing everything in its path, including the seaside resorts. With the tsunami surging inland causing inundation as far as 1.2 miles. Inundation is another term used to describe flooding. The tsunami in Thailand was confirmed to have claimed about 5,395 lives, but it's possible that it claimed as much as 8,000. Among the dead were nearly 2,500 internationals. Now, there's an important distinction to make between resorts in the region of Kaulak and neighboring resorts like in the region of Futek. In contrast to the concrete high-rises constructed for resorts in neighboring regions like Futek, the resorts in Kaulak consisted of mainly low-lying bungalows and other lightly constructed buildings. So essentially, all of the buildings that didn't have a concrete base were completely swept away which was a major contribution to the high number of fatalities in the Kaulak region. Some deaths of notable people in the area include the daughter of the famed actor Richard Attenborough, Jane Holland, who was staying at one of the resorts in Kaulak. Also, Poon Jensen, or Bumi Jensen, a grandson of the King of Thailand, was jet skiing off the coast of La Flora Resort in Kaulak when the tsunami rolled through the area. The Thai Navy patrol boat 813 was nearby actually guarding Jensen, but the tsunami waves, they were just too strong and too fast for anybody to do anything to help him, so he would end up being killed by the approaching tsunami. Interestingly enough, the tsunami didn't end up sinking boat 813, instead, the waves would carry the boat almost 1.2 miles inland, where it would finally come to rest when the waves receded. Today, the boat remains where it was left by the tsunami and has since been transformed into a memorial and a museum dedicated to the lives lost on December 26, 2004. Although the death toll is comparatively low to the region of Aceh in Indonesia, the tsunami in Thailand caused an absolutely staggering amount of destruction, and Thailand actually recorded the second highest tsunami wave height during the 2004 tsunami with a wave height of almost 30 feet. Sri Lanka is a small island country just off the southeastern coast of India, and it was located just over a thousand miles from the epicenter of the 2004 earthquake. On the morning of December 26th, seismic monitoring stations on the island would have picked up signs of an earthquake within minutes, and the people of Sri Lanka would have felt a long, rolling rumble. 
However, due to Sri Lanka's distance to the epicenter, it was the thought of those in these seismic monitoring stations that a tsunami at such a distance would be impossible. The distant quake wasn't enough to cause any widespread damage, however the resulting tsunami was on its way fast and it would more than make up for that. In the Ampara district in eastern Sri Lanka, a holiday train known as the Queen of the Sea was making its way from Colombo, the capital of Sri Lanka, to the city of Gale. Aboard the train were 1,700 passengers, give or take a few. It was a relatively short trip, so many were simply just relaxing, reading magazines, and gazing out the train windows. And those who were gazing out the windows would have noticed small bouts of flood water surging around the train. Almost immediately, an alarm was sounded in the local area, and the train ground to a halt. Many of the locals in the area saw that the large train stood firmly between them and the approaching tsunami, so a large number of them decided to hide behind it, hoping that it would be enough to shield them from the tsunami. And another large number of people climbed up on top of the train cars so they wouldn't be swept away. The incoming tsunami, however, would prove to be much much larger than any of them could have anticipated. Almost as soon as these people got into their positions, a massive churning wall of black water and debris nearly 30 feet high slammed into the train, ripping it off its tracks and crushing anyone who was taking shelter behind it, while also those who were taking shelter atop the train were thrown into the maelstrom of water and debris. Those inside the train found that due to the train being packed with so many people that it was almost impossible to open the train car doors to try and escape. So as a result, almost everyone aboard the train drowned in the tsunami as it carried the train nearly 328 feet further inland, resulting in almost 1600 fatalities, also making it the deadliest rail disaster in history. In the surrounding countryside of Sri Lanka, there was untold destruction. Entire towns were completely swept away. Communities were completely wiped from the face of the earth. When the tsunami finally struck the shores of the island, it reached a height of nearly 40 feet. And the landscape of Sri Lanka is actually pretty flat, so not much of When the tsunami finally struck the shores of the island, it reached a height of nearly 40 feet. And the landscape of Sri Lanka is actually pretty flat so not much of it rises that far above sea level, so this allowed the tsunami to go pretty far inland, almost as far as 1.2 miles. In just Sri Lanka alone, there were reported to be as many as 35,000 fatalities, and over 20,000 more injured, making it the country with the second largest amount of fatalities in the 2004 tsunami, just under Indonesia. The earthquake that occurred in 2004 was powerful, very powerful. So powerful in fact that it's considered the third most powerful earthquake in recorded history, registering at a 9.3 on the Richter scale. So it's no wonder that it generated one of the most powerful tsunamis in recorded history. And in order to understand how this tsunami formed, it's important to look at how the earthquake happened in the first place. The area of the epicenter of the earthquake is what you'd call a subduction zone, and that's a term for when one of the Earth's tectonic plates slides beneath another tectonic plate going down into the Earth's mantle. In this particular subduction zone in the Indian Ocean, the Indian plate gets subducted under the Burma plate. But sometimes there is sideways movement of these plates which causes friction with each plate, and that's exactly what was happening in 2004. What ended up happening was the Indian plate subducting under the Burma plate began to build up so much pressure and friction that when the pressure between the plates finally gave way, it caused the sea floor to rise almost 50 feet along the almost 1,000 miles of fault line over the course of only about 10 minutes. 
The sudden rising of the seafloor is actually what caused the tsunami that slammed into the shores of all the countries surrounding the Indian Ocean. And just over the course of seven hours, almost 240,000 people would be dead, and thousands more injured. The events of December 26, 2004 completely shocked the region. A tsunami of this magnitude hadn't been experienced in the area in well over a century. As a result of the tsunami, the tourism and fishing sectors of the economy surrounding the Indian Ocean were severely damaged, with many fishing boats and industries just completely destroyed, and those who were still able to sail refused to because of the concerns of a similar disaster happening again. Since 2004, most countries, including Indonesia, Thailand, India, and Sri Lanka, have installed extensive early warning systems for tsunamis, which in some places could give people enough time to seek shelter in the event of another tsunami. The installation of these systems has since given confidence to tourists and fishermen to return to the area. Although today, coastal communities in the areas affected have since recovered and the tourism sector is once again thriving, the scars from that morning in 2004 are still present, even today. They're present throughout the streets, on the beaches, and within the hearts and minds of those who remember that day. Hi, if you found this video interesting, then feel free to stick around because I post stories just like this one about all the strange and not so strange events found throughout the world. So with that, I hope you have a great day and goodbye. As a result of the tsunami, the tourism and fishing sectors of the economy surrounding the Indian Ocean was... Why are we still here? Just to suffer? The Indian Ocean was... As a result of the tsunami, the tourism